Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Yeah. So um, before we kick in and jump into um, the presentation, we kind of wanted to get a read of the folks in the room. How many people here are members of EA Insiders currently? Well, oh, good. Oh, so okay. That's, that's better than we that's thought. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> How many of you have at least heard of it if you're not in it? Okay, okay so good relatively deal. good. So um, we're going to walk through today um, uh, what the program is all about, so kind of the ins and outs of what employee advocacy is, but also kind of why we created this program for our employees and what we wanted to get out of it. Um, what's next for the program, what's coming over the next year, and then, of course, how we want all of you guys to get involved in um, and what it's all about. So um, we'll start with uh, just briefly a little bit about our story, and it's really a tale of two teams, as you've heard, because we're both here, talent acquisition and corporate communications. Um, so uh, back in FY13, this uh, idea of employee advocacy started to float around. We didn't really know what it was. Um, and in tandem with that, <coughs> on our Inside EA talent acquisition channels, we started to notice that our most popular content was our employee-driven content. And so we knew that there was something there that we needed to sort of expand on, but we didn't know quite how to do it or really what it all meant. And so I um, ended up connecting with someone at Dell um, who started their employee advocacy program. She started it and then she ran it. And it uh, gave me sort of the ins and out of, out of what it meant for them. What I was fascinated with is that, I mean, Dell is a pretty large company, larger than us, but at the time, which was just a few years ago, they had about 10,000 employees that were out there engaging on behalf of the brand. And that was pretty exciting, all within the social media space. So um, after talking to leadership and talent acquisition, we uh, made it a task that over the next year, we really need to put some emphasis on building out a proposal about what either a TA advocacy program would look like or an EA advocacy program would look like, employee advocacy program, what would be, um, who would be our partners, what would be the timeline, how would it work, would we need a pilot, sort of all of the, the what and the how and the who, et cetera. So it was around the tail end of FY14, um, of that, excuse me, Q4 of FY14, that Sandy and I started talking, and it turned out that um, her world, they were starting to have some pretty serious conversations with some of the senior staff as well on how to create and foster better employee engagement. So it was a natural connection. So as we continued to finalize our proposal, for us, a program was really focused in two areas, two key areas, and that was having a platform and a program that would showcase our EA culture. Um, the employee experience was, uh, was very popular on our channels, and so we really wanted to foster and encourage that. And by doing so, we were looking to have some better candidate engagement. Up until that point, the engagement with our candidates really started with the recruiter. So we knew there was an opportunity at that point to have that relationship being driven by our employees and not just on the shoulders of the recruiter. And overall, our theory was if we could really connect those two, then that was going to attract talent to the company um, by offering a very transparent um, and personal connection using these real authentic employee experiences. And ultimately, that was our goal. And so meanwhile, while Jen was sourcing this sort of insight from her world, on the corporate communications side, we were also thinking about how do we better engage our employees. So I know that everybody in this room, I'm sure, is as intimately familiar as I am with the reputational challenges that we were facing about a year and a half ago when Andrew came on board as CEO. So from a corporate communications side, we, we looked around the company and we saw how excited people were to come to work, how excited they were about the projects they were working on. We had new leadership, sort of a new energy, and you know, within Andrew's vision is this one team mentality. And so our team was tasked with how do we better engage and ignite our employees and help share their story too, because we see them um, you know, excited and engaged with what they're working on, but how do we bring that to an external audience um, and help show that in a, in a way that feels really authentic? Um, and you know, we ultimately so we ultimately also wanted to make sure that employees around the globe could feel connected. I think there were definitely some challenges we faced, especially as a global organization with studios and teams spread out around the globe. We were finding that some employees were finding out about the news that our team was putting out through third-party news sources before they were finding out about it internally. We wanted to find a way to kind of close that gap and make sure that the employees felt as valued as they are and as part of the conversation as everyone else are, are treated the same if not better than our consumers are when it comes to finding out what's going on at EA and what's what to be excited about. 
So when we uh, joined forces and started to really kind of discuss um, brass tacks, if you will, we focused in on seven key areas that were important for us as we looked to build out a program and a platform um, ultimately. And the first was uh, the sense, as Sandy just spoke to, of community. I mean, we all work in our uh, little business silos in our location, what we do at EARS, everybody may not know about in Stockholm or in Tiburon. We have different um, games that we're, we're aligned with. I mean, we're very disparate. We're a global organization with a lot of employees. And so this sense of community, the sense of knowing what your peers were doing in another country, um, it was really important to us, and we wanted to foster that. We also wanted to um, provide a platform that encouraged pride. I mean, I knew, you know, from my own experience, I love what I do, I love the company that I work for, I love my team. I've rarely run into an employee who doesn't really align with that um, outlook in terms of where we're at today with EA. <clears throat> and so we wanted to encourage that and also allow it to flourish in a community environment. We wanted to um, improve social learning. Um, social media can be a very uh, it's an unknown space, very unfamiliar for a lot of people, and so this was a great way for us to provide some expertise and education in the social media landscape and shared knowledge, really. And then we also um, wanted to identify some influencers. There's a lot of employees out there already, some of that you may know, who are out there speaking in social media on behalf of the company. They have a ton of followers, they know what they're doing, and so by giving a platform for those influencers to kind of formally engage in, we thought we would offer an opportunity for new employees to align themselves with someone that they believe in and they trust. Um, and then establishing thought leaders was really important as well. Um, as you begin to engage in the program and start sharing out content that has been pre-selected as important content for whatever reason, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in the program, you begin to um, formulate yourself as a, a thought leader in your industry or in your community, depending on the type of content that you're looking to share. And that was really important for us, to give someone um, a platform to be a trusted source, to have credibility. Um, something that they're uh, a place that their networks could depend on to get the right EA content and news. We also wanted to help people grow their networks as you're out there um, uh, providing and you've become sort of this credible source and dependable source, people are going to start being attracted to you. It's just sort of it's something that happens. We've, we've seen it happen, <coughs> ourse happen ourselves. So we wanted to give you uh, an opportunity, our employees an opportunity to grow their own networks. And really the biggest thing is about um, empowering our employees. Um, the face of the brand has changed um, over the course of the 30 odd years that we've been around and um, uh, employees are the new face of the brand. So we wanted to give a platform for people to be able to tell their EA story externally. And that was really the driving factor out of all of these seven areas. So this is why we needed a platform for our purposes and, and to create, but we also knew um, we needed to give employees something that they wanted as well. So those were things that we considered along the way in the process, was what we were hearing from people around the company, but what they were anxious for. So they wanted to be able to connect with other people around the globe. They didn't want to be stuck in their own team or in their own group um, and not know what was happening around the company and in different studios. They did want to be the first to know. It's, it's not... You know, it's not fun to learn about something that a company is doing through, you know, IGN. You want to hear about it from us first. And I think, too, when people wanted to go out there and share, they maybe didn't know, like, what was the best thing to share. So it's great to get, to be the first to know, to be in the know, to feel like you know what's happening around the EA network in a timely fashion. Um, I, you know, I've heard from a number of people across outside of the communications team that they want to get better at social media and they needed some tools and some better training to do so. So we consider that as well. Um, they needed something that was easy to use. I think that's such an important thing. Like, you know, all of us are busy people. We've all got a lot of things going on, a lot of things on our plate. You don't need another tool that requires, um, you know, a lot of steps to figure out or to learn. So we're going to walk you through exactly how the sign-in process here works and how our, the tool that we ultimately selected is used. And you'll see that that was a really big driver in us. Is we wanted to give the employee something that was really easy. Um, obviously, as Jen pointed out, you know, it was about growing your networks as well as ours so that we, you know, we wanted to make sure it was a tool that employees benefited from on a personal level. And of course, we wanted it to be fun. That's kind of an obvious one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not fun to do employee right. advocacy if you're not enjoying it, right? <laughs> like that's, that, it's about capturing that sort of lightning in the bottle. Exactly. So we continue to build out the program, but we um, had to pay attention to what uh, was going on in the industry and what research was saying. So I won't read all of these, but I think um, as we 
um, uncover a lot of research, what it came down to really wasn't rocket science. I mean, we trust messages from the people that we know best. So, you know, you consider a CEO a social media channel and you make an assessment that perhaps you're getting a little bit of corporate speak. <laughs> but if your best friend is out there and they have 2,000 people and they're saying, oh my God, EA is the best place to work for, you won't believe, you know, what I got to do on creating this game, you're going to believe that a little bit more. And people are attracted to that. So these, uh, these stats and the research that we've continued to uncover, even just to this day, um, have continued to validate the importance of um, uh, giving a platform for employees to advocate on the brand. Mm -hmm. um, so in order to kind of give you a quick glimpse into what the actual tool is, for those of you who haven't joined, we wanted to run through our training video so that you could see it in action. And if we alt-tab. Welcome to EA Insiders Training. After watching this video, you'll be able to access the EA Insiders portal, full of great content about EA games and culture to share across your social media channels. First off, let's talk about the benefits of joining. Ever find it's hard to know what's going on at EA? We have so many games, so many locations and studios, and it can be hard to keep track of it all. The EA Insiders portal gives you a one-stop shop to find all the latest news and information about what's going on. Sharing news on social media is also a great way to show off where you work. You pick the stories you want to share, whether it's a project you worked on, a game you're excited about, or even a cool story about the people who work here. By joining EA Insiders, you can grow your social media presence and may even land some fun rewards from us. The main thing to remember is that you are in control of what you post. Now let's walk through how to get started. First, disclose where you work in your profiles. It should be clear to your followers that you work at EA. The EA Insider hashtag will accompany all of your posts, so no matter what, we have you covered. Next, log in and connect your social media networks. The EA Insider's program will never post on your behalf, and you have total control over what content is shared and when. The privacy settings you've selected on these networks will always take priority, so you can feel safe and secure when you're on the platform. If you're accessing the tool online, we recommend you use Google Chrome or Firefox as your web browser. Want to share on the go? Be sure to download our mobile app to share anytime, anywhere. As we all know, social media is public. Your post might welcome opinions and ideas from people you may not know. If you're on the receiving end of any negative comments, remember, don't respond. The best rule of thumb online is to stay positive. If you get any messages that make you feel uncomfortable, let us know and we'll help you out. Always follow what we call the headline test. If you wouldn't be comfortable seeing your post on the front page headlines, don't post it. Keep private information about EA private. A few other tips before you share. Review our company's social media policies on EA World. Every piece of content comes with a sample status message to get you started, but you're encouraged to customize it and make it your own. And remember, always write posts as yourself and in an appropriate manner. Now you're ready to get started. Just a few reminders. Be sure to disclose in your bio that you work for EA. Be positive and authentic with what you share. Always follow the headline test and of course, have fun. EA Insiders is a program built for you. See you online. watch to get started so you can get a little bit of a sense of how the platform works. Um, I won't walk you through all the different steps we took to actually launch the program, but just for some context, we um, initially launched this just about a year ago with a very small pilot group. Um, as is the case with programs at EA, it's always good to test them out with a small group and kind of figure it out. An advocacy program for EA was completely new. We never had one of these before and we wanted to test the waters. The platform that we're using, we use a vendor called Social Chorus. They're also a startup and new and sort of learning along with us. So it was important for us to bring in a group of people to test it out, get feedback, learn how people were really going to engage with it, and how, how to create a, a platform that was going to be working for everybody. So once we sort of got through the initial test phase, we started to open it up to some different teams um, as well and sort of test out what it was going to be like to have um, or you know how do we how do we get more uh, new content in the platform how do we market it internally how do we better train employees so we sort of took this phased approach 
Um, and we also learned in that process that a variety of content was really what employees wanted. And that was a great find, I think, for both of us, was yeah. that it wasn't just about the game news at EA. People were really excited to share hot jobs, um, job openings on their teams, and also just third-party content industry news. <coughs> Um, or even like career advice articles from places like LinkedIn or The Muse were also really popular. So this phased approach gave us a chance to really get a sense of what was gonna resonate with employees so that when we went globally with it, um, we felt comfortable and confident with the program that we had. And so we did reach a point where we were ready to go prime time, ready to roll it out to all of our regular full-time employees, and that was a pretty exciting time, but also a bit nerve-wracking, because <laughs> at this point we knew that we couldn't get the program fully out the door in the way that we had anticipated with the growth that we had wanted without getting C-suite support. And uh, we knew if we didn't have all of our ducks in the row, like if we hadn't really practiced and, and, and built out the program from a marketing perspective and really had all of our I's dotted and T's crossed, we could not get C-suite support. So how happy were we when we finally pitched the program to them and we did get the support from Chris Bruzzo, our CMO. So that was, it was truly a win for us. Um, and so then it was some decisions, uh, some decisions had to be made about how we were going to launch it and in what way. So where made the most sense? Where were we going to have the most visibility, the most engagement, and the most exposure? And the town hall uh, uh, really made sense for that. So we started to put in the workings to get that out there. Um, we also knew that, well, okay, we can sit here and talk about the program much like we are today, but what's going to get um, our employees excited about being a part of the program? And so we worked with the Visceral and Dice team to get some exclusive content around um, Battlefield Hardline. And it was actually um, content, or I should say some assets, that were not released out in the public at all, not even to anyone outside of the studio. And so what we did is coordinated a 24-hour window for our EA insiders to have um, access to this content and to be able to share it out to their networks. And people really responded to that. They were very, very excited. And so that was really another <laughs> win for us. Um, and then uh, additionally, we needed to recruit the influencers that we mentioned earlier. But uh, we had to be very vocal about them. So who could we identify in the company that were already out there using social media? told them about the program, got them excited about it, and then again used them as a, as a way to have other uh, employees align themselves with someone. Okay, hey, X, Y, and Z, this person is in the program, there's something there. If they're out there advocating for the brand, then maybe I should be too, and what is that all about? <clears throat> so that was back in February, early February, and since then um, the results have been really positive. Um, our numbers are continually going up. In fact, since we did this deck, um, we're already at just <laughs> under 1,500. So, you know, baby steps, but it's, it's, it's really popular. The number of um, um, active users in the program has continually increased. Right now, we're holding right around 25% on average. Um, the number of actions <coughs> that people are actually out there using, the insiders are out there sharing, has continually increased. And our social impressions and engagement overall continues to go up and up. So we feel uh, uh, really positive about what we're seeing and know that the only way is up. And then in terms of what it looks like, so now in the next few slides we'll start talking a little bit more, uh, have more granularity about the product itself. But if you're interested and you're not in the program um, yourself and you want to know even a little bit more, one of the best ways to do it is to just type in Google um, the EA Insider hashtag. Or you could go to an aggregator, a social media aggregator like Hootsuite if you use that as well and type in hashtag EA Insider. And you can see actually who's participating in the program and also what conversations they're driving by the content they're sharing. Very simple way to learn more about it. Um, so what's next? I mean, I think uh, for those of you who are in the program now, you see the web tool and we'll show it off to you shortly so you can get a sense of what it's all about. Um, but there are a lot of really cool, exciting new product features coming in the next year, so we just wanted to tease those. So we've been working with um, the EADP tools and tech team already to work out how we deploy the mobile app to employees, because we know that engagement will only go up if people are able to share on the go. So we've got an iOS and an Android app in the works um, that would make it really easy for you to sort through what stories are live that day, set them to your queue, either share them right away or put them in your queue to share later. Um, or just go through and read the content. I mean, sometimes people just want to use it as part of their daily routine to read through the news. So, um, so that's coming. 
And you know, right now when you go in the portal, you sort of get everything all in one view. We are looking at ways to scale up the program, get even more content in there, and then uh, sort it by channel so that when you go in, you can really get a customized look at what you're interested in based on either what teams you're, you work on or what games you like to play um, or what you like to talk about. So we are looking at ways to scale it up and make it more customizable for you. So the most important part of the presentation. Yeah, so how to get involved is what everyone's been waiting for. <laughs> so we wanted to give you some examples of actual content that's, that's been put out there so you know what it looks like. Nothing different than what you see today in terms of your Facebook posts, your Instagram posts, LinkedIn, or Twitter. Um, there are some uh, EADP legends that are currently in the program, like Ken Moss and Damon over here, which we're excited about. Rita up there as well, who's kind of settles two areas. but. Um, it's great. I, I mean, the content is a lot of fun, and there are actually out there people using it in a very personal way. I mean, you, I think just to reiterate, looking at this at this slide and looking at the post recently that Damon put out, hashtag EA Insider. I mean, how cool! You know, that's the type of company that we are. We're not just all about our games. We're also about a, a, we have a really rich culture, and so let's promote that. All right. So joining today. We uh, I broke it down into three uh, areas that we hope make the most sense for you and, and what you uh, might uh, be attracted to. So the first one is really broadening your awareness of what's going on at EA. At the beginning of our presentation, we talked about that little silo that we all work in from our location or our business and even sometimes our area <laughs> or even sometimes our queue. <laughs> so um, this is a way for you to broaden your awareness. We get content from all over. So third-party articles, um, what's going on in outreach, what's going on in careers, um, you know, how do I develop myself as a professional. Um, I mean, it's just, it runs the gamut. We're easily putting upwards of 20 pieces of content into the portal on a weekly basis. So there's a lot for you to choose from and really start learning about what your peers are doing, what's going on in Stockholm, what's going on in Burnaby. Um, and really, it just sort of gives you a, a scope that you may not have had before, or at least if you had it before, you had to go searching for it yourself and you couldn't always depend on what you were finding. And then second, um, tying your accomplishments to the content. Uh, one of the greatest attributes about this program is that you can customize the message associated with the piece of content to your own voice. So the way that you speak with your friends and your networks may be a little bit differently than we may, especially Sandy may speak in corporate calls, but we True. collectively may speak. And so you have an opportunity in the platform to go in and adjust the message that makes sense for you. And so what we say by this is tie your accomplishments to the content. EADP, and you know, I hope I don't get myself in my hands slapped for saying this, I kind of see you guys as a silent underdog, right? It's about like the, what are the game studios doing? Like what, and that's sort of what you hear. But the game doesn't go out the door unless you guys touch it, <laughs> right? And you all have a big part in that. So customize your message to maybe a piece of content, something that you touched a particular project, and share it out there. I and mean, I think that's a really great way to use the use the portal. Yeah, absolutely. And the last one here is just, um, it's a great way to expand your network. So I know for me, I was pretty active on Twitter already, just being in the communications space. That was um, you know, a channel that I used a lot, especially at work. But LinkedIn, I never really touched because it was just too much of a hassle to find articles or find content that would be relevant to my LinkedIn network. So EA Insiders gives you a great way to become sort of a guru in a new, um, a new platform, a new area, and grow your network someplace that maybe you didn't have the bandwidth to or you didn't know how to get started. So um, we found that people are using this as a great way to engage more and get more content out there and really sort of get themselves going on social media. So hopefully you'll be able to dive in and start to share and see how you can grow your networks just by engaging. So with that, we wanted to make sure that today's presentation was a little interactive. Yeah. So is there anyone in the room who has not joined yet but would like to demo joining for everyone else? So we're going to put somebody on the spot. So And, and there's also a little <coughs> disclaimer with that because you're going to be uh, logging into your social media channel of choice, you need to know your password. So yeah. not everybody knows their password, and we don't want to like spend. <laughs> we won't watch you as you type yeah. it in, but you know. <laughs> Any volunteers? Any volunteers? Let's pretend he just typed in EA World, so there's that. <laughs> and everybody here should know how to get to EA World already, so this is why we're going to walk you through to show how easy it is to find and to sign up. Great. So the program is tied to culture. So we're going to go to culture. 
and find our EA Insiders portal. Yeah. Um, so you'll want to scroll down here and you'll see there's details on why to join, who's eligible, and joining is easy. So you'll want to click on um, joining is easy to click to the actual portal. Pop up by. Oh, pop up. We didn't need to spend a lot. There we go. There you go. <laughs> easy enough. Okay, so you have three options, right. uh, three channels you can sign into. Take Facebook. <laughs> it's the only password I remember. There we go. <laughs> so everyone here is going to be Facebook friends with Drew by the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> So this is just authenticating yourself. You're giving permission. Yeah. Okay. Which we've all seen. This is not a screen that anybody should be unfamiliar with. And this was in the video as well, but just so you know, nothing will ever get posted on your social channel unless you click through in the EA Insiders portal to share. So this isn't going to be something there. Weird stuff starts to pop up on your Facebook. Okay. <laughs> right. So then we come to, um, this is our uh, basically introductory screen. So we have some terms and conditions that you'll need to go through. Um, and, and check that you agree. Hopefully you do. They aren't pretty, they aren't mm -hmm. too cumbersome. cumbersome. It's basically just that you agree to follow EA's social media policies, which everyone has to, regardless of being in the program or not. So um, so there's that, and that you're agreeing that, you know, as part of the program that you're advocating on behalf of EA, which is a benefit of That's very right. optional. So yeah. you can set that so that you can log in with your email and password later, or you can just click with Facebook with one click. So. Right. And one thing to remember no is you do sense. always want to use your EA email address. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go. And that's how we make sure that only employees I, I have access. watched this. You have watched it. <laughs> we can watch it again, but yeah, nothing's changed. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you are okay. now in the portal. Cool. So this yeah. is it. Very user friendly. That didn't take very long, right? Took, yeah, I don't know. We should have timed that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So at this point, um, I mean, you can always peruse it later, and hopefully you will. But you get a selection of content. So all the content. Yeah. Star Wars ATSD. So choose whatever you want to share. So you'll see here that this was a Facebook post that actually came from the Star Wars Battlefront site. So the great thing about this portal is it lets us filter in the social media channels of EA's franchises as well as original content. So there's some of this where, oh, just, yeah, sure. before yeah. you go, let's see, because well, we want to just oh, no, move a couple of things yeah, yeah, out. Before you share. <laughs> yeah. It's so, it's so easy that you Yeah, I know. It. You want to move forward. <laughs> but I, have, I have a question here. So yeah. what's the difference between share now and add to queue? It's like, so, is yeah, share we'll now, talk like, about it looks that. like it's disabled. Is it, is it not, is it not, can you not share from the screen? Or no, it's always available. Okay. It is sort of um, misleading the way it's colored. But. Okay. Yeah, so we'll talk about those options. So just to, to point out a couple of things in this window. So if he has um, gone into settings, and we can show you that um, to authenticate his channels, where it says Facebook up at the top left, all of the channels that you have authenticated into the program will be there. So you can actually choose which ones. So he may only want to share this on his Facebook, but if he's authenticated Twitter and LinkedIn, he may choose to do those networks as well. It's really completely in, in, in your control. And, yeah. and so you'll see here, we every status message or every post we put in there, you've got predetermined language. So if you select something that came from one of EA's social networks, the status message will be identical to what came out on that channel. Um, if it's something that we put in originally, we sort of customized it to the employee voice. We encourage everybody here to feel free to use what, what's there because that makes it easy, but feel free also to just completely delete it and write what you're write excited your about because that's what makes it fun and makes it interesting. You'll see here in this gray bar um, beneath that the link to the content, if there's a link to a story, um, this one just has the image, so it's not relevant there, but the link to the story and the EA Insider hashtag are always going to be included in your character count. And that's just our way, as we said in the video, to make sure that people who are reading it know that you're an EA employee. So yeah, so share it now. Mm -hmm. You could click if you wanted to share it immediately right at this moment. You've got the clock there um, on a smaller scale. So if you click on the clock, you'll see you can set it to a specific date and time. So this is great if you want to come into the portal, say in the morning, pick out a bunch of stories to share. It's not the best practice to say tweet 15 stories all at once, right? Yeah. So you could space them out throughout the day. So that way you could come in, schedule a few stories to share, even over the next couple of days, and set it and forget it, which is a really nice way to kind of, you know, pick out what stories are interesting to you. <coughs> and then there's also add to the queue, and that's a, a little bit um, more letting the system 
I'll put a timestamp on it for you. So I tend to use that a lot myself because I just want to set it and forget it to yeah. Sandy's point. Um, and it is about, I think, like a two to three hour window that it'll give you. So you could go in there, potentially select all the content you want, share it, add it all to your queue. We'll show you how to access your queue because if you ever want to go in and say, you know what, instead of queuing this, I want to send it now, you can edit that as often as you want. Um, so really, you just have those options, three options uh, from a timestamp. So why don't you click add to queue now and then we'll show you what it is. And that way we're not forcing you to share. Yeah. You should share. Sure. <laughs> sure. 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 Well, we'll share another one. Level of peer pressure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to go into settings, this is where you're going to be able to authenticate all your other channels. So you'll see here, you'll see how his Facebook is connected. He has the option to disconnect. So if later you decide you don't want to share to Facebook anymore, you can do that. You can add the other channels. You'll notice just for Instagram, I wanted to call this out because Instagram doesn't allow you to post to it from any other platform. So the reason that we have it authenticated there is if you wanted to go, say, post something from an EA event, I posted when we had the Star Wars characters in our lobby from the sales team meeting um, or you know a team offsite, you can add the EA Insider hashtag to your photo. And as long as you're authenticated here, we'll capture that activity on the back end. So, um, so that's just one way to engage also on Instagram. If you go into the, the one that looks like a calendar, that's where you're going to see all of your scheduled posts. So if you actually chose a date and time, you would see it here. If you queued it, you would see it here as well. And you can go in and make the edits or actually delete it. Like all of a sudden, let's say you didn't like Star Wars, which we know would never happen. <laughs> <laughs> or you found you something could delete even it. cooler to share yeah. about Star Wars. Yeah, you could things, delete it if so. you wanted. So you can completely manipulate all of the content of your choice. Mm -hmm. Is this when it intends to post it? Exactly, okay. yeah, so it'll show the time. So either that's the one you set, or if you click add to queue, it'll auto set it based on what time it is and spacing it out. So you've got the option to edit. And then if you go to the little human being icon, this is actually your personal advocate profile. So for those of you who may be a little bit competitive, or you just like to keep <laughs> up on your stats, this is a way to do it. How much are you sharing? Who from your network is engaging with it? And what those stats over a 90-day history really look like? which is a lot of fun. So you've done nothing so far, <laughs> which is okay, that's, we forgive you. <laughs> but the more you share, the more you can sort of track what your progress is here. So it's kind of fun actually to go back in and see. And when you've started to share more as well, at the bottom of this page, your top shares will show up as well. So um, I got to learn what my six most engaged posts were. And it was, um, it was interesting for me to see like, okay, what kind of stuff am I sharing that my people I'm friends with are interested in? Um, and so you can get a sense of what's popular to your network. And then start sharing more of that. More of that, that's exactly. That's what they're liking. Mm -hmm. Can we see that now? You uh, have to let him share, but I can sign in as myself if you want to see mine and so if you share, So how immediate is this? Like, he shares now and someone likes it. Uh -huh. Does that immediately show up as I share? I think there's a little bit of a time delay, so I don't yeah. know if we'd be able to do it quite live. It takes a little bit for the back-end tool to capture all of the activity. But it, I mean, it is pretty pretty quick, pretty but quick. I don't think it's an instantaneous thing. Yeah. yeah. So if you want, we could always share some content, and if you don't mind logging in, we could look for it, or I don't know what to say. It's up to you if you'd like to share it. <laughs> and share it. Share it. Yeah. I just wanted to put it out. Oh. <laughs> You're not true. You're not true. Well, we don't have to go look for it, but it's there. <laughs> cool. Okay. Any so, questions about that? Seemed pretty straightforward. Yeah. Okay. All right. you Thank you Facebook. for right. your participation. Yeah. We have a mug and a sticker. Oh, cool. So thank you for being our guinea pig. Thank, thank, thank you, Drew. So really, that was just a, to give you a sense of the program. Now we're just going to open it up for questions. For questions. Or I, do, are there people on the phone as well? Patrick is doing phone questions. Okay. Yep, I'll take the any questions in the chat. Okay. Cool. We we'll use a mic so people on the phone can hear. Do you guys think you'll use it? Yeah. Yes. Good. Yeah. Is there anything about, about like, are, are you guys surprised that we created a program like this? Not we, but like EA. <laughs> are you so proud of us? Yeah. That we <laughs> when do we think the app will be ready for mobile? It's uh, a great question. That is a great question. So we've been talking with the, um, the EADP tools and tech team. Poe has been um, awesome to work with to figure that out. Um, it should be coming 
anywhere from three to nine months, depending on where we can get it in the priority schedule. So yeah. we actually now are trying to think of ways to deploy it out to users before we have MCM, mm -hmm. Amazing Technology. Uh, uh, the MDM, M MMA, MMA, <laughs> MMA. <laughs> um, it's all the acronyms. So, um, so yeah, it's 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 baked and ready. It's just a matter of figuring out how yeah. to get it out to employees at where we're running into issues. So, um, we may try out a couple of options to get it out to people, and then when we can roll it out, um, you know, with the new process, we may have to have users delete the app and reinstall. So we're just trying to debate which one's best. So. We're interested in this team's feedback on that as well, because um, yeah. we'd love to get it out as soon as possible because we know that it's going to be something that people enjoy using. And it's a lot easier when you have it on your phone. We all have our phones with us all the time, and, and so, you know, we have the option that we have sort of today is is do we just make it a web download link for you to be able to put something on your phone? I mean, it's a little bit cumbersome, and there's an opportunity if we move it into like an EA owned app store down the road in this time frame for you to then have to re-download it and, and install a new app, which it's a lot of steps. So we're kind of working through what our options are now as opposed to having to wait. The nine months is the worst case scenario, three is the best, so we'll probably be somewhere right in the middle. Okay. Thanks for that question, Danny. <laughs> So, so this is to share content that like people already generated. But what are you? Is there any plan to further expand this in the future? For example, if for everyone, us developers or engineers or like artists who they want to talk about more techniques, more get more in depth and more like talk about the more aspects of what it, what's a day like, like what we're we working on. Is there anything to any create your own content? Yeah, or to yeah. expand on like not only because we're, we're this is great for sharing like like oh yeah it's gonna do this that and that but when that, but. I think people still see that as a, oh, it's already generated publicly already sure. by the company. But how about for a personal, like people, if we want to future share, like, oh, what we're working on and what's the technologies, and if it's not under NDA, how, um, is it possible? Is that possible in the future that we do that? Yeah. Yeah, so right now the platform is built so that you're sharing content that is already out in public domain or it's an image that we're able to give to employees to share out externally. Um, but there is sort of, um, we actually just went through a product overview with the vendor this week where they showed us some new options to create content in there that would be exclusive to the portal and actually you wouldn't, wouldn't be able to share it out directly. Mm -hmm. So that's a good way to keep content that may be under NDA, um, but that you want other employees to read and consume mm -hmm. right there in the portal. Is that what you meant? Mm, yeah, somewhat. Do you want to, if you're looking for, um, to take the stuff that you guys are working on and share it externally, is that yeah, that's what like you're another, asking for? Yeah. So there, um, we've got a good answer for you, which mm -hmm. is, the nice thing about Jen and I running this program is that um, Jen owns all the careers and employee brand content. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in corporate communication, so we own the EA corporate channels, social media and web. And so we're always looking for more content there. Yeah. So it's just a matter actually of if you've got a great story or a great project that your team is working on, we would love to promote that on either the career site or the EA blog. Yeah. Um, so we can coordinate with you for that and then that way it gives us somewhere that it's published and then we can really easily add it to Insider so it makes it easy for employees to share it. And that's the one thing, like you know, to Sandy's point, it has to have a home already online. But for example, we're working with um, um, outreach and not and there she you know, what we've been told by the, the, the people that run that group is like well we've got this really great blog and it talks about all the wonderful stuff we're doing but EA world is internal facing it's our intranet right so what we've done is we've taken all a majority of that content at this point and we've moved it over to the career site uh, we also have the ea.com the beat as well that might be an option for us too if we want depending on the type of content it is and now we're giving it a home in the public domain and so we can link to it yeah. So, and we're definitely anxious for that too. I mean, we, we want to be sharing um, what everybody's doing from across the company already. So yeah. we would love to get more content from your team out there. Yeah, we're never, you know, we, we're not at a point where we're saying no more content. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we really would love to hear more about like what's going on in the business that is not under India that we can actually um, showcase because mm -hmm. that's what it is. That's our culture. That's who we are. That's what we live every single day. So let's get that out there for a multitude of reasons to engage with our employees, to engage with potential talent out there. Um, yeah, it, it really could be never ending. Yeah, so our email, this EA insiders at ea.com is an email alias, it just goes to Jen and I, so anytime you've got ideas, feel free to shoot us a note and mm -hmm. um, we'll definitely review it and find a home for it, for sure. Any questions? 
I have another one. Um, <laughs> so there was the, the photo earlier of Matt and I drinking a beer on yeah, Joey's yes. Facebook page, which was yeah. hashtag the EA Insider. Um, that's something that we didn't get from the app, right? We just yeah. generated right. that. <clears throat> How much do you recommend employees to sort of, you know, off the cuff create their own content and hashtag it EA Insider so it shows up in our in the program? Is that highly recommended or do you suggest people mainly stick to what's already provided through the application? Yeah, it's recommended. Um, you know, we trust our employees. We're, you're also <laughs> yeah. signing off on our terms and conditions, right? You're reading through the guidelines. You're a professional. You're grown-ups. You know, so we don't have to be out there. First of all, we, there's no way two people can keep track of all of the content right. out there. We don't so want we're, to. We, don't want, yeah, we also have regular jobs aside yeah. from this, too. But we're putting the faith that you are acting on behalf of the brand in a way that makes the most sense. And so, you know, if you have a moment out there that's like, hey, you know, for example, one of the a really popular piece of content I remember when we kind of first kicked off was like uh, something was going on in the lobby and they came by and they're like, oh my God, this is the coolest thing. And they took a picture and the hashtag at EA Insider. And people just go crazy for that stuff. We've had uh, insiders who've taken pictures of their desk and like people are like, oh my God, look at that. And this is the neatest thing. And like for us, it's like, it's just us, you know, it's just who we are, but like people love that stuff. So yeah, we do encourage it. Right. And we had a lot of conversations before we launched the program about what the risks were in yeah. sort of opening this up. And the attitude that we come at it from was, you were gonna post that photo, whether or not you're part of EA Insiders or not, right? That's right. like what, what you're working on, what you're doing with your team. People were already, all of our employees were already out on social media talking about EA engaging with EA. It's just a matter of giving them a community in order to interact. So um, we're definitely not, not scared of that at all. We really encourage it. Cool. Yeah. We went through about five months of legal, so yeah. you know, we've done that battle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Any other thoughts or suggestions for the program? Things you would yeah. want to see in the future? Um, concerns? Well, that's in. Is there anything on the phone, uh, Patrick? No. Okay. Any more questions, guys? Cool. I've got a question here for you. Um, what would you say is the biggest challenge that you ran into uh, both setting up and just continuing running the program so far? Yeah. Ooh, a lot. Um, <laughs> I think from my end, my biggest sort of concern, and this is still sort of ongoing, is keeping people engaged. We had this really cool moment when we got to launch the program. And we had the exclusive content, you get the momentum behind our CMO announcing it. But keeping people coming back to it and enjoying it is what's important. And um, when, we, when we talked about it with Chris, actually, before launching the program, he was saying, you know, you really should think about the launch of Insiders the same way we think about launching any of our games. If we launch a new, if we, if we launch Battlefield Hardline and everyone goes out, buys it, plays it on day one and never plays it again, that's not that's not success, right? We're talking about, as a company, how important player engagement is over the long term, and we see it the same way for a program like this. We don't want people to log in, check it out, decide it's not for them, and not come back. So um, that's what sort of, I guess, keeps me up at night about the program, is making sure that it stays fresh and engaging. Um, one thing that was really encouraging, though, was that uh, last month when we had the new Battlefront trailer reveal, which Mind you, it was like the most popular trailer we've ever launched as a company. But, you know, we timed that so that we got it into the portal as soon as it went live. We sent out an email to all of our members to share immediately. And then we also highlighted to share it in the notification that came out from Patrick about the, about the launch. And we actually had a number of people that joined the program that day to share it. And then a lot of people who came back into the portal that day as well. So I think, you know, as a gaming company, we have a big opportunity with so many cool beats and news um, that we're going to have to bring people back in. So we're looking at that as sort of a best practice, and we're going to continue that um, through E3 and other sort of big moments. That's what, that's what it was for me. Yeah. Um, in the beginning, when we had the pilot, one of the biggest challenges for us was gate garnering awareness about the program because we had to take baby steps. There was only so much that we could do. We invited some social media uh, uh, savvy people that were already out there. We invited everybody in our own departments. Some people volunteered for it who knew. But then we were like, we can't tell anybody about it in a public space for the world of EA to know. And that was a challenge. So we could only do so much promotion. 
and we also ran the risk, and this was like I was a little you know, tiptoeing around it, of somebody um, finding out that somebody was invited and then they weren't. So mm -hmm. when we were finally able to open the floodgates, we were really happy. Yeah. <laughs> we were really happy because we could shout to the world, we could put it up on EA World, we could send out communications to everybody. So that was something that was just sort of like a challenge that we faced with the program um, in terms of like the, the steps of where we were at, understandable. And interestingly enough, we've talked to some other companies um, uh, that are going through uh, uh, exactly what we went through over the past year, and they're running into the same problem. So, um, yeah, it's just I think uh, keeping it engaged, keeping everyone engaged, and um, giving you what you want. A big part, I think, of the success of our our portal and the program over, overall is the ease of use. It's really simple. Yeah. It's not, you know, there's not a lot of steps involved. In fact, <laughs> I, and hopefully you will agree to this, when we did finally open it up to all RFTs, we were like, okay, what's gonna break? Something's gonna break, and the portal's gonna stop. Work. And like, nothing happened. Yeah. And that was amazing, and we were like, this is like the first time that's happened at EA. <laughs> you know, we yeah. launched something, and it, it, it was just, there were no technical difficulties. So we, we feel very encouraged by that. Um, Got one. Got one question on the phone, and I hope you guys are familiar with the program because I am not. Uh, okay. Anthony asks, any plans to have a Ronku type program through or for EA Insiders? Um, not. I think there's probably a big opportunity to put Ronku content on the portal. So for the for those of you who are not familiar with Ronku, that's a program that's run out of Chris Thorne's team, and it's a way to engage. YouTube influencers to create user-generated content about our games. Um, the Ronku program specifically is a, a pay-for-play, so we actually spend advertising dollars behind creating user-generated content. We have another program called Game Changers where we bring in influential gamers in to test um, to test our games and provide feedback. Some of those are also YouTube influencers. We don't pay them for their participation, but um, I think there's a definite opportunity to highlight some of that user-generated content in the portal. Um, actually, that's a great suggestion, and we'll connect with the Ronku team to figure out how we can better do that. Um, and I think, too, um, in the portal, and you know what, we missed sharing this when it was up there, um, but there, right at the top is a button that says Share Content. And you click the button, you can enter a URL, and a little bit of a blurb about whatever you're submitting, and we get that on the back end to check it. And you'll see content in the portal that's actually been submitted by our insiders, mm -hmm. and their name and their little photo will show up with it. Um, so if any of you guys are actually creating, generating your own content that you want on there, um, that's a great way that we've found it. Um, we've had a few um, insiders that have um, shared LinkedIn articles that they've written on their own pages, so we've shared it through that as well. So um, yeah, I think there's definitely an opportunity to share more influencer content there, but also get sort of our EA insiders to create their own content and share it with us. Yeah, I mean, the content really is endless, you know, we're out there sort of scouring and uh, everything that we know just by the, the teams that we work on, but we ran recently, um, uh, just encouraged uh, our insiders to start submitting content um, over the past couple of months, we were very vocal about it, and they, our insiders uh, surfaced content that we were like, wow, I've never seen that before, that's yeah. really cool, so, you know, it is not just us kind of putting it out there, being... Um, administrators of the program, but it's also, it's, it's that community. Mm -hmm. Again, we're all a part of this big picture. Uh, is the program uh, um, open to public, to external? No. No, this is and just... And the content is uh, shareable, right? Right. Why not open? Yeah, exactly. So that's the key, is that all of the content in there already lives externally, with the exception of a couple things that we pre-vet on the back end. Um, so that way you know that whatever's in there, you're safe to share. It's already out in the public domain. It's already been approved. But only EA RFTs are able to join the program and continue to access it. So it is exclusive to employees. Great. Great. Thank you. Let's hear Again. for our speakers. Thank you.